Shalom. Welcome to the Jewish View. My name is Rabbi Nachman Simon with the Chabad House of Delmar, and together with my co-host, Mark Ronich, to stay my new service, jbiztechvalley.com. And now, as you can see, a columnist for the Jewish press. Yep, I have a column every month uh, called Albany Beat, and I talk about how government relates to the Jewish community, or doesn't, as the case may be. <laughs> and... Um, you know, so I'm, it's very enjoyable. I'm happy to be able to do well, that. We've got all kind of pink here, That's uh, right. Mark. Well, What's with the pink? I have to introduce our guests. <laughs> yeah, all right, um, there you go. All the way at the end here in the purple <laughs> is Darcy uh, Chaika, mm -hmm. uh, who's a, uh, well, with the American Cancer Society, the regional chapter, the outreach engagement coordinator, and, you know, you could tell your whole title will be on the screen. Right. The whole right. And we also have a breast cancer survivor with us, yes. uh, Marsha Chafis uh, from Clifton Park. Yes. And please welcome both to the Jewish View. It's Thank such you. a it's such an honor to have you here. And uh, we know that breast cancer is October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and mm -hmm. pink is the color of the month. So I wore my I wore my pink yeah. yarmulke. I got a pink and, over here. And I realized I that, that I have a very limited pink wardrobe. So <laughs> you get the pink yarmulke. Right. <laughs> so anyway, welcome and thank uh, you for having you us. Know, Darcy, let's start with you and tell us about numerous the numerous types of cancers, what your organization is doing, how do you stay ahead of it? You know, you it's already you know you fundraise money, it takes money and time and you know, it must be challenging for you. Absolutely. Well, when we talk about cancer, cancer is actually thousands of diseases. And uh, so the American Cancer Society has been committed for over 100 years to helping people prevent cancer, helping people through a cancer experience, funding research to cure cancer, and also advocating for the needs of those, uh, you know, who, who are affected by cancer. And so, the good news is cancer is a very different conversation than it was 20 or 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Many people are talking about it openly with their friends, with their family. In the public, we have a very open dialogue about cancer. It's not the stigma that it once was. So we've come a long way in, in that area. Um, also, many family and friends are rallying around loved ones. They're honoring them at some events like our walks or just personally through different connections and community events. And then, you know, another piece that I think is just really encouraging is that over the last 30 years, the research has made tremendous progress in terms of the treatments, the screenings that are available, the quality of those screenings. And so our survivorship rates from cancer are greatly improved than what they were. And the other thing that I found out uh, is that recently you can just target the certain cancer cells instead of radi radiating or impacting good cells. You don't have to uh, harm more than what you just want to, uh, more than what's already there that's really uh, could be a killer. Yeah. You know, you don't have to spread it around to kill uh, good cells, you can just kill the bad cells. Yeah. Is that oh, correct? Yeah. Well, there are so many different treatments and so many different types of uh, machines and different, so technology has enabled that to happen. Right. And the researchers working hard to, to make that connection happen. So there's been tremendous progress. In that. Are the rates of cancer going down? I mean, you say, I know that, uh, you tell me, but I don't uh, just know that cigarette smoke amongst, right. smoking amongst people is down, so that would be, I figure, you know, better results and less cancer. Right. Well, overall, in their lifetime, men have a one in two chance of, of developing cancer, having a cancer diagnosis, and one in three women. So the truth is, this is still very much a reality, and we have a lot of work to do on, you know, finding that out. As far as the, uh, the, the rates of, of or is it increasing, is it decreasing, um, it's kind of stayed the same in some ways and increased in some ways, but the reality is we have better screenings that are detecting it. And so it's a complicated question in terms of the screening rates, but I think the overall piece is that, you know, the, the risk is still there. We have much work to do there, but what's present more so than any time in the history of cancer 
is the hope that we have for the cures and the services. Um, yeah, because the research, I mean, Absolutely. that, um, you know, they're always saying they have, I, again, I don't know the numbers, but just so much money is given by U.S. government, obviously donations too, yes. and it's really having a good effect, you're saying. Sure thing. So the federal government is by far the largest funder of cancer research. The second largest funder of cancer research is the American Cancer Society, and so we're very proud of that. Um, but you know, the yeah, federal government—it yeah, is through, charitable through their walks. through our our Relay for Life walks and our, our making strides against breast cancer walks and other community events. In fact, some of that research is happening right here in New York State. In New York City, we have many grants in play. In the Capital Region, American Cancer Society is funding research at the University of Albany and at Rensselaer. Uh, mm. So there is wonderful science happening even right in our backyard. I want to bring in Marsha into the discussion here. And what was your experience? Uh, how did you come to know that you had it? And I, I was diagnosed from a routine mammogram, my yearly mammogram. And um, uh, I, I I expected that I might get breast cancer because I lost my mother to it mm -hmm. at some time in my life. But it was just a routine mammogram. I go every year and they found what they called a troublesome spot. And um, luckily I had a wonderful surgeon who took the spot out and um, where did you I'm have? Today. Where did you have the surgery? I ha I uh, had the surgery done by a doctor called Heider Gazus. He was a surgeon at St. Peter's Hospital, uh -huh. and then I went to New York uh, Oncology Hematology, and oh, okay. I my radiologist was also a wonderful man. Mm -hmm. Two wonderful doctors. And what was your, what, what, were you shocked when you heard I it, or was, you said you were expecting I was frightened. Frightened. I was really frightened. I, I didn't know what to expect. I was teaching, and the fall semester was starting. What were you teaching? Uh, I taught for the State University of New York, the University that, Center for Academic and Workforce Development. You Albany? Yes. Oh, you Albany. Okay. Yes, and uh, it was actually it was sponsored through Hudson Valley Community yeah. College, but it was a welfare to work program, uh -huh. and you know I was getting my classroom ready and preparing mm -hmm. and whatnot, and um, it just it took me back, and I was I was very frightened, and I was very frightened of how my treatment would interact with my teaching, but. The, it came at a, a very unfortunate time for me because my husband and I were, exper we were expecting our first grandchild, and mm -hmm. I was also frightened that I wouldn't be able to be part of that. Well, it's, uh, you know, life has many different turns to it. Yes. How did your religion, you know, you're Jewish and mm -hmm. you're up in Clifton Park, how did religion impact on your, your faith impact on this? Well, it was right around the time of, of the new year, uh, How many years ago? 5768. Yeah. It was eight years ago. And um, of course, we went to services. And I was sitting in um, Yisker services and I was praying for people that have gone before me. And um, I started to think back on all the years of the Jewish people have gone through struggles, have had obstacles put in their way, but have overcome. And um, I think that as a Jew, I inherited a, a sort of a spirit of perseverance where I wasn't going to let this get in my way of leading my life the way I wanted to. And just thinking of how people have overcome so many obstacles, um, I decided I was going to do my best to get through it. But you know, it's important it. you say about your family. Um, how did it affect your family? I mean, oh. Mark's asking about yourself, but, you know, of course, it's your disease in your body, obviously, but obviously there's loved ones all around you that obviously yes. are also obviously very concerned with you. Well, um, as cancer is definitely a family affair. Um, my children were concerned. We were reassured that it would probably be eradicated um, with radiation treatment, whatnot, and then surgery. 
Um, so I went forward and I, I taught every day and after my teaching I would go to NYOH and, and get my treatment. And my daughter was uh, my, my son and my best friend and confidant, my husband, were mm. all a part of, of trying to bolster me and hold me up and uh, I was trying to hold them up. and. Because um, I know sometimes I counsel people as a rabbi, and so, uh, it's amazing, but sometimes the family are more affected yes. than the person themselves. Yes, They're yes. more depressed about things, and the other person, like you say, you have confidence, and I'm going to beat it, I'm going to overcome this. The, the family has fallen apart. And the family feels yes. helpless. Well, I think, too, that in the back of their minds, they, you know, there was always that doubt, but they put on a good... Mm -hmm. front but with my husband I always could let my hair down and he could let his hair down mm -hmm. with me and we could discuss but with the children we tried to keep it a little bit more positive. Now, so, so let me just ask you gently uh, yes. how old were you when this happened? Um, oh boy. I know. Yeah, with our age with well, women I know I'm asking gently. Uh, you could say my age is 29 so <laughs> we can. Uh, I always ask. Eight this, years. Uh, well I'm 73 now oh, so wow. Eight years right ago, ago I thought you were 53, okay. Oh, okay, that's very nice, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but you overcame it, bottom line. I mean, where are you today? So you're healthy, I, you look healthy. Thank you. Yes. I, uh, I just, I have had another surgery on my breast. It turned out to be nothing, it was in the fall. Good. And I, I get monitored all the time, and, and I just went for gene testing, another gene testing, and that came out well. And I just do self-breast exams every month. And you know, I wanted to ask you, because I think I heard that the mammograms are obviously a great device for screening, <laughs> but are they cutting that out? I heard that through the insurance. Well, the, the gut mammograms are not being cut out right now. There is a lot of research uh, going into mammograms and the effectiveness of them, um, rates of false positive, false negatives. But um, the screening guidelines for mammograms, I think they, it, it's currently annually for mm -hmm. every, everyone right. 40 years up and 40 years and older should be getting an annual mammogram. But as I was sharing with Marsha earlier, I think the most important health message that everyone should embrace is see your doctor annually. Absolutely. Because as those screening guidelines change or as more is known, your doctor is going to be plugged in to that information and be a great resource to help connect you and to that information. We've been talking about families. I think that's an, another important factor in that annual visit with your doctor. It's knowing your family history, mm -hmm. understanding, you know, is there a history of cancer in your family? Do you know what types of cancers? And that is, is an important part of the process. And itself. since we're talking about breast cancer, I know there's a lot of other types of cancers, but I once uh, did a news story about uh, dense breast tissue. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about that a little bit and see how that impacts mammograms? Because you talk about false positives, and maybe, you know, that's something radiologists don't take into consideration when they read the mammogram. So. Sure, so with breast density, that's something, again, that there's a lot of research currently going on uh, with, with what impact does breast density have on your chances of getting cancer or ability to detect cancer. And so um, the, the truth is we don't have a firm answer on where things are with breast density, but that's very much something that, again, researchers are looking into um, and many different radiology, radiation uh, centers are, are looking into to make sure that they have the latest technology in their, their testing, what impact that may have. So people who are, let's say, not as well endowed can have dense breast tissue, yes. and women who are well endowed not, don't necessarily have to have dense breast tissue. Not a corollary or something. Yeah. Right, and therefore, I guess, you know, you have to really specifically ask the radiologist or ask your doctor yeah to ask the radiologist, do I have dense breast tissue? And is that why I'm getting a good report? Because they can't see past the tissue. So you don't want to just take a good report and say, oh, that's the end of the story. Oh, right. you know, look into it further and make sure that, you know, they're getting a real positive, re you know, response. Well, what you described, Mark, I think is, is a good, in, in indication of how you can use that to empower your own healthcare mm -hmm. is a data point. You know, yeah. 
asking about do I have dense breast, t uh, dense breast tissue and what that means and, and you know, using that to carry through with your different screenings and treatments. You know, mammogram in itself has changed in the past eight years. Now we're doing digital mammograms and if there's a concern after the mammogram, they do a uh, ultrasound on the breast. You get so. a better picture. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you have this uh, American Cancer Society official sponsor, a birthday is very beautiful. But I just see, and this is important because we're talking about, in a way, check out your doctor, but people just say, well, I don't even want to, you know, go to even step one. I mean, they should go to their doctor, but how can they prevent it? That would be the question. I mean, obviously, there's no, no guarantees in life, to, like Mark was saying, no guarantees of anything. But, yeah. but on the other hand, uh, would be improving a person's chances of not getting cancer. There's a lot of things you can do. Mm -hmm. Marcia, did you want to comment on no, it first? Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I know you have. So I think one of the first and foremost things that anyone can do at any age is adopt a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. So making good food choices, um, exercising regularly. Well, food choices like fatting, because you always hear these constant, you know, I mean, it's almost every year, this is no good for you, that's good for you. <laughs> And I always say keep kosher in your <laughs> yes. But right. even the kosher food, I mean, you yeah, have well, uh, stuff derma. Yes. And stuff oh. derma may not be good for you, yeah. you know. It's delicious. Though. It's delicious, <laughs> though, you know. So it's, what's delicious may not be good no, for you. Okay. <laughs> I mean, does a person you feel that, for example, organic, I mean, I know that's a big uh, issue now. 10% of people are organic. Or would you say, I mean, are there scientific statistics? I mean, it sounds yeah. good. You don't put chemicals in it, but... I don't have the evidence today on, on the no. organic versus not, and I know there's some regulation, you know, questions with organic, but what we say is fruits, vegetables, you know, mod everything in moderation. So if there are those right. treats that, that you do want to have on occasion, you know, it, it's not about maybe completely eliminating that, but but moderating. See, I can have my kishka mark. They can hear from kishka, the doctor yes. over here. <laughs> A small piece. Is All right. right now. But I, but, you know, I, I'll tell you my personal story, my personal background, is that my mother had uh, breast cancer on her left side uh, oh, probably 20 years ago. She had a, a mastectomy and then it came back again in the same side, even though there was no lymph nodes impacted and yeah. that whatever lymph nodes they took out, you know, by, as a precaution, it's still, you know, it's a, it just ravages, you know, it just makes you, uh, so uh, emotional when you yeah. hear about, you know, this so, sort of thing. Then you have the, uh, uh, my, my father's side, uh, my father had bladder cancer. Now, he was complaining from February of 04 about something going on, and the doctors couldn't detect anything, yes. and he kept seeing a doctor. Yes. And then in October of 04, he finally went to a urologist who said, you have bladder cancer, but it's too late. Yes. When we couldn't Again, diagnose it earlier, we didn't know that's what it was. So there are some cancers which really are too far gone before, you know, wh wh when you finally know that it's happened, you know, when, when you, that you have it. And then when he was in uh, the hospital, they found that it spread to his bones and bone yes. marrow. And you know he went for the radiation. He went for whatever treatments they were going. To, they weren't going to do a bone marrow transplant, but you know they were going to do whatever they could to keep him comfortable. Yes. And then by January of '05, he had passed away. So it was three months of it went quick, and it was three months, but it was a gut wrenching three months. And you know you just hear of people who, you know, have pancreatic cancer, brain cancer, liver cancer. I mean. It's no just comment. it's just amazing that how many organs now, you know, really get impacted. And I remember, you know, back in what I, not that I personally remember, but you know, 30s, 40s, 50s, you'd say, oh, uh, he's you know, don't bother Grandpa. You know, he's not feeling well right. today. Right. You know, he's in his room. Yes. And they would never use the c word, mm -hmm. but they would always use some euphemism. Yeah. And they wouldn't want the family, like you were saying, to know the children and all that. So it's just, you know, don't bother him, you know. So. One thing uh, Darcy and I were speaking of on the way over, too, is that, uh, that smoking yeah. is, is, is a very bad 
uh, it's really could be a real precursor to cancer. People and people are still smoking. But the numbs are going down. Yeah, but the e-cigarette numbers are going up with mm -hmm. the youth, mm -hmm. and, and that they, they know that's bad for you. I mean, terrible, I don't, I just don't yeah. terrible. So for the e-cigarettes, were again, there's the research is, is still being conducted on that, but um, the truth is they they don't know what's in an e-cigarette. It's not consistent. It's mm -hmm. not regulated, no. and so that's something that we're we're at the American Cancer Society advocating to. Um, add e-cigarettes into the Clean Indoor Air Act. And, and, Let me ask you like another thing even, that. but marijuana, which is getting to be legal in a few states, and um, and I just saw a report that it's going up amongst the youth, and you know, and everybody, maybe it's What's not going so, up? The, the usage of marijuana by young people. Oh, yeah, but that doesn't mean it's bad for you, or it's going to cause cancer. Uh, does it well, mean I'm that, asking, that's yeah. what I'm, uh, does it that's mean my that, question. I mean, I, I mean, you're smoking, uh, you know. Well, yeah, but it doesn't have always, the nicotine. They don't always have, smoke it either. They put it in foods. Right. <laughs> Hash, you know, well, I've got, only heard. That's right. Brownies. Brownies, you know, that's yeah. Right. Now, at Hope Club, we have uh, two things I wanted to get back oh, yeah, to with you, Rabbi, is um, about, family. The, about family. We have a friends and family group. If you have any congregants that are, you know, going. Well, our viewers. You have thousands yeah. of viewers on the Jewish yes, view here. Yes, absolutely. Uh, we have a friends and family group. We have mm -hmm. many groups to help families. I wish that I had known this when I was going through it, when my family was going through it. Um, and where is this friends and family group? How do you get, you know, how do you get to know At them? Hope Club. Hope At Hope Club. Club, which is on um, One Penny Lane in Latham. Okay. We have many different types of groups, too. And... Um, we have different types of cancer groups. We have prostate cancer, and it's not a med. It, it's prostate. We have blood cancer. We have um, a wellness group for people that are just diagnosed. We have a friends and family group. We have a uh, uh, a recurrence group. And we were talking about recurrence. And it's um, a lot of talking. Blood cancer, all, all types, so, it is talking. You know, it's a lot of talking. It's talking. And, and I think that's tiring for people. It's, they don't want to listen. They feel depressed already. They oh, don't want to listen to it other people's. bolsters it people. Does. Okay. It's just the most wonderful thing. I know um, that's why my mom never went to... A, a class on a regu any regular it's basis. It's not a because, class. Well, I know, I use that word, mm -hmm. just I shouldn't have used it with a teacher here. <laughs> 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 but, I, but a group setting, because she always felt, what do I have to hear other people's problems for? Okay. What do I have to hear what's going on with the... But I said, it's going to be helpful oh, to you. And she just didn't want to get through that, past that wall. That's you know? Well, a lot of people want to keep it private, you know. It, yeah, um, it doesn't help. They no, keep it private. It's, no, it's uh, Hope Club is just a wonderful place. Okay, so if you like the Beatles song "Penny Lane," is you know, <laughs> you know easy to remember. You know, so <laughs> one Penny Lane. Now, why did you choose Penny Lane for the American Cancer Society address? So Penny Lane has a very special meaning to the Capital mm. Region. Uh, Penny Lane is named after E. Stewart Jones' first wife, Penny, yes. oh. who Penny lost her her battle He's to ovarian cancer. And this is an appropriate month to be talking about that. Actually, September, among other cancers, is ovarian cancer awareness. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think that uh, you know that her connection to this community and the community with the can uh, you know in the fight against cancer and E. Stewart Jones and, and his continued commitment is really exemplary. So we're really proud of that name and, and, and delighted to honor it. Okay, so it's. Uh for that connection, not the Beatles song, or we'll or happily, not, we'll happily or, play the Beatles song, too. and and also <laughs> not like March of Dimes, where no. it, the, you know where it's a uh, FDR is on right. the dime, and you know there's a connection. You, there's nothing with pennies that you it, that you contribute. You're looking or for something. dollars, not pennies, <laughs> right here, Mark. It so, was named for Penny. Penny Jones. Jones. Yeah. Penny Jones. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, uh, did you uh, either of you never know Penny Jones? Or, no. no? I didn't okay. know. Is there her. a picture of her in the lobby or anything? We or? have a, a plaque. A plaque, with, mm -hmm. okay. So, you know, and I didn't know that story, so that's very special. E. Stewart Jones being a prominent attorney in yes. Troy, and uh, he, all things Troy, you know, it's, uh, <laughs> he leads to E. Stewart Jones and the Jones family. So, yeah. um, what, 
you know, what other types of colors match with different cancers? I'm just curious. Uh, so September um, is Childhood Cancer Awareness Month as well, and that color is gold. gold. Okay. Um, ovarian cancer is like a teal color. Yeah, like that's what wearing. I have on. you wore it. No, <laughs> it really yeah. was. I'm just happy to support it. Uh, yeah. Prostate cancer is a blue color, uh -huh. as is colorectal cancer. Um, and actually, September is Prostate Cancer Awareness Month as well. Okay. So uh, there are a lot of colors. Uh, yeah, but keep going. Yeah, I'm um, just thinking. I'm trying to think what else I can remember here. I think those are the, the okay. ones I can. Okay, main ones. Yes, there. yes. And uh, why do you do some walks and some runs? And what other variety of activities do you do uh, for different cancers and that sort of thing? So. Um, Relay for Life is our largest uh, community event program where the communities themselves form committees and help to really plan the event experience around the community in which they're in. So mm -hmm. for example, in the capital region, the greater capital region, we have over 20 different events from Green Island to an Albany Colony event to Niskayuna, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Columbia Clifton County, Park, Clifton probably. Park, there's yeah. a, an event there. Um, and so the, the beauty of that is the community sh shape uh -huh. the event. And it's a beautiful, uh, the premise of Relay for Life is you walk the track for the duration of the event. Some are uh, six hour events, some are 24 hour events. Uh -huh. But walk the track to really uh, signify that, that pursuit of a cure, that, you know, uh, mm -hmm. that need to, to continue to work and, and fight. And there's a couple of memorable pieces of our Relay for Life events. The first is our Survivor Lab. Every uh, survivor that participates in a relay will get a purple t-shirt, and it's the kickoff event. Did you go to the Hope Club relay this year? I, I was unable okay. to. I had other plans, okay. unfortunately. Yeah. Okay. And so it's a beautiful thing but to you've watch been in the survivors. Years. Yes. Other years, yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. At our Hope Club Relay for Life event, we had 74 survivors walking around, and, and, and we, we all, the rest of us, cheer them on because it really is that beautiful moment. And for a newly diagnosed survivor, to be standing next to someone like Marsha, who's been a survivor for eight years. Mm -hmm. She's hope to them. Yeah. She is the reason mm -hmm. that you know they can, they can see a future eight years away, or see a future 20 yeah. plus years away like your right. mom. And, so, and then the other really uh, inspiring piece of a Relay for Life is our Luminaria ceremony. Yes. At, uh, when it gets to be dusk, we have uh, little white bags that people will decorate either in honor of or in memory of someone and we will place them around the track and we have a, a moment of silence and just a beautiful tribute mm. to those that have uh, lost their lives to cancer or those that are living through uh, cancer. But I also think another important point is just because there's so much publicity, including being on the Jewish view, but just aware that, you know, get a checkup. I mean, just it's, oh, it sounds absolutely. so simple in a way. But it's really, it's, it's a much needed idea. People don't see the doctor. I've had people, to, oh, I haven't seen a doctor five years, oh, and they're no, older no. people. No, no. And, you know, I feel healthy. And I says, well, maybe you ought to, I mean, I'm not a doctor. I'm a rabbi, but I, people come to me for all kinds of things. But just that I'm saying the publicity gets people aware, you know, that, hey, it's an issue out there, and you better think about it and do I something about it. I go to my surgeon uh, every six months for a breast exam and then of course once a year I have the mammogram and yeah. when I have a gynecological exam I have a breast exam too. I cover yeah. all the bases. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, and, and, important. You know, yeah, one yeah, of the important. Im important things you know, is to keep those annual visits as close to the date mm -hmm. of that one year anniversary of your really? last one. Oh absolutely. Um, colorectal cancer um, is, is a big priority for the American Cancer Society. It's one of the most preventable cancers yes. if we can catch it early with colonoscopies mm -hmm. and other forms of colorectal cancer screenings. The difference between a precancerous polyp and removing that versus even an earlier stage cancer can really, you know, be, all the be devastating to a family. Yeah, even be a benign tumor that you find, even if it's benign, it's still, it, you have to get it. It can be removed. a problem. Could be, could turn into a problem. You know, since I was in my late 30s, I was going for uh, colorectal mm -hmm. um, yeah. checkups check and stuff. And, yeah. you know, colonoscopies are, the worst part is the 24 hours before the yes. event. We were just <laughs> discussing it coming down. <laughs> so it's, but the event yeah, itself is not, you know, yeah. so, uh, you know, you just have to take care of your body and, and have, listen to your, the body uh -huh. and the symptoms and, you know, and don't put it off and say, oh, this is not 
an issue, you know. Now, you did have a case with Angelina Jolie yes. where she, with, she with being game. hereditary, she just, boom, that's it. Take it mm -hmm. off. I don't care. I don't want right. to deal with this. Uh, can you explain that a little more, Darcy? Do you want to comment to the oh. genetic testing piece, well, Marcia? Okay. Just, I, you, no, you, tell me what, what her title is again, a genetic... Genetic counselor. A genetic counselor. I, I just, I had the BRCA gene test um, years ago, and um, my daughter has now yeah. uh, three young children. Thank God. Hashem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, so she was worried about, you know, getting cancer, whatever. So we went together to NYOH to a genetic counselor. And my daughter had a panel test, which checked through her whole body for, because there's a lot of colon cancer in the family, breast cancer, and uh, she came out negative. And I had had the BRCA gene test, which was negative, but now there's uh, an additional test for breast and ovarian cancer, which is called the BART test. And I had that done, and that came out negative, so I was pleased, but I was speaking with my genetic counselor and um, she said to me that 5% of cancers are inherited. 95% of cancers are just a cell that goes wild, by ac almost mm -hmm. by accident. So you advocate genetic counseling for oh, every person? Well, I never heard of that. That's why I'm asking you. Uh, if, if you have a family member that has had cancer and there's a, there's a genetic test, absolutely take oh, it. I, I took it first for my, my, my daughter and my son because uh, women with breast cancer can have sons that develop prostate cancer. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's, uh, it's important, very important, yes. Okay. Mark, you know, unfortunately we're out of time because it really is, I think, very educational for myself and obviously for all our viewers. And the main thing is we should end up with a blessing that you're doing God's work of helping people that are sick or, like I say, preventing people to even become sick. That yes. would be the best thing in the world. And keep doing it, but do it with good health. Thank yes. you. Yeah, keep up the good work. Thank, Thank you. you. And we'd love for you to join us at Hope Club yes. okay. in Latham or to join one of our Making Strides I Against Breast Cancer Walks in October. Or I will do that. And encourage people to come to Hope Club because it's a wonderful here. Okay. place. <laughs>